game begin. Game over. Well, welcome today to Tech and Toys. My name is BJ, aka the Biscuit Jesus. And if you guys are paranoid like me and have ever bought a ledger or a treasure from the internet and this has been done, you should be scared. There's kind of a big scam that goes on where people actually will buy these and put their own programming on here or anything else. So the second you put your crypto on here, they have access. So today what I want to teach you guys is how to take a Raspberry Pi and make one of these. Now where you're going to have to start is the main area is actually getting the software on here. And that can be actually grabbed from the Pi Trezor site itself. And if you go through here, you can actually, if you want to, a lot of people actually do it with a, I believe a Pi Zero. They're super hard to get at the moment, so I'm actually gonna be doing it with a Pi 4 today. But let's say you do have a Pi Zero, you're gonna have to go through here, solder pins, blah, 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 blah. This is kind of the better process. So the actual four itself is already gonna have the pins on it, if I can open this. And what you're mainly gonna be shooting for are right here. And that's gonna be your GPIO pins. And you're gonna take this tiny little sweet screen and this is the Adafruit 128 by 64. Ooh, what does that mean? 128 pixels by 64, nothing that awesome. But this is gonna pop on there and then this is gonna be your screen that you interact with the Trezor with. So I guess where we start here, we're gonna go to, what is it, Belina Etcher. You're gonna download that and that's how you're actually gonna put the software onto the actual device itself. And then you get to go to Pi Trezor and scroll all the way down here to Pi 4. And you're gonna go ahead and download that. If you don't know how to download, that's, I don't know what to do to help you with that. But once that's on there, you're gonna have, in this case, a little SD card. If you need to have the adapter, you have one of those as well. But we'll take the SD card itself, plug it in the hole, don't be juvenile. And pop it right in there. And then we're gonna go to the etcher itself. And essentially what you're gonna do with this is take that software that you just downloaded and you're gonna put it on there. So imaging, if you will. But you're gonna flash from file. You're gonna grab this Pi Trezor, in my case, Raspberry 4. Go ahead and open that. Pick your storage device, which is this little Chewy right here, and flash. <laughs> Doesn't take too long, opens up command prompt. And then we just sit here and do a little jingle. And sometimes it crashes here, let's be real. So if you have any issues here, you might have to actually just go in and reformat your card correctly, but the entire process is pretty damn quick. Cool, a flash complete. If you go actually back to the Pi Trezor website, you'll see that there's a bunch of different screens that you can put on there. And as you scroll down, you'll see there's one part of the code that you have to change. The only thing that you're really doing is saying, hey, I'm specifically using an Adafruit and not some other screen. And then you're linking what these two buttons do. But the website, this is pretty much what you're changing right here are these three values. And this little boot E is what you want, not boot E. That is different, but I'm not gonna shame. If you want it, that's totally fine. And the specific file that you want is the Pi Trezor. So here's what we're gonna change. If this is your first time staring at coding, this isn't complicated and you're fine. So what you're gonna do is the type of OLED to use. Literally, these are just the different versions. And we're actually using the OLED Adafruit, which is equal to one. So when we come down here and it says Trezor value, we're gonna switch that to one. Yay, you're a coder now. And then down here for the export Trezor OLED flip, you flip it, so you put a one there. And then the last two, these export pins, this is literally what the yes and no pins are. So the one where it says 16, change that to six. And the one that's 12, change that to five. And after you've done that, just go ahead and save. Do, 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 save. Close that, and now literally everything is done. So this card is your Trezor OS and everything that you need for these two things to talk to each other. So. You go ahead and put it in the Raspberry Pi. Ooh. And then in this case, the Adafruit itself doesn't actually come with this little extending bridge. I do highly recommend it, especially if you're using it with a Pi 4 or something else. If you're using it with the, what is it, the Pi Zero, you don't necessarily need this, but you go ahead and line up the pins, push it in, 
And once you're there, it gives that nice little gap so you're not actually interacting or touching anything else. But that's completely set up. You're good to go on that side. The next fun thing that you get to do is hopefully find the right window is go to the treasure suite and go ahead and download the desktop app. That's how you're gonna interact with everything. And then once that is downloaded, you go ahead and open it. And now we are on our treasure suite. If you've never used one of these before, like a, a ledger, I think what you do is you take it and then the money goes in. I don't know. I haven't used one of these in a long time. But nonetheless, once it's plugged in, get your cable. This is gonna be fun. This is where we find out if any of this actually works. Let's see, you'll plug it in, wait for a while. The screen will hopefully be like, hey, you're connected. Lights are here to let it know it's booting. So you have to be patient. And there we go, and now we're connected. And this is where you're gonna do the security prompt. Now again, why I started this with being paranoid, the nice thing with this is I know for a fact nobody has touched my device before. Nobody could put any coding on there, nobody has access to it. So a lot of people wonder what's the difference and what's the point of this. So this would be known as cold storage. Hot storage is what most people use with MetaMask and anything else. And the real main difference there is when you're doing MetaMask, when you create your private keys and your seed phrase, that's all done online. With private storage, or cold storage if you will, this is done all completely offline. I'm gonna walk you through the process and part of me actually wants to show you guys 23 of the 24 words, not give you guys the order and show actually how hard it would be for you guys to figure out how to get in this, even though you have 23 of the 24 seed phrase words, but you don't know the order. Probably not gonna happen. But this is gonna be a lot of going back and forth and this was what's nice is I can disconnect from the internet. I can hit set up treasure. You create new wallet and then you go standard seed backup. And then what's gonna happen is over here, on your actual little unit there, it's gonna say, do you really wanna create a new wallet? Are you having an existentialistic crisis? Probably. And now these two buttons, your five, which is closer to the side, is your cancel. And the six that's over here, that's gonna be your confirm. So you go ahead and set, hit confirm, needs backup. Your wallet is almost ready. We go back over to the screen here, we click. Go ahead and uh, click on these three little chewies to say you're, you understand what's going on. And then this is where it's gonna go. And honestly, again, I could probably show you a lot of these. For security, you never want anybody to see any of these. First word's gonna pop up there. And this is gonna be the exciting part where we write all these down. I'm probably gonna write them on this bill. And so we get the first word and we're gonna write it down. Yay. And then hit next. And next word pops up. And again, there's literally no way somebody has access to this. So say you did it on MetaMask, Somebody could have installed some kind of screen capture. They could have keystroke lockers. They could have anything else. The only way you get this phrase from generating it is to physically have this in your hand. Again, awesome for security. So let me go ahead and write down all these words. And once you've gone through all 24 words, you're gonna go ahead and click the button one more time and it's gonna run you through here. And so you just click Looking at each word, there you guys go, you get some of them, and then I'm gonna hide the rest. But yeah, that, I think that would be actually really fun to give somebody 23 of the 24 words, not give them the order, and see how long it would take somebody to actually figure it out. I'm assuming your borderline won't, but again, I'm not great with random computing and other things, but it's really funny when people are like, oh, somebody hacked my crypto. It's like, maybe you just gave them your seed phrase, because this stuff is pretty dang secure especially when you're doing it in this method where it's like, my computer is not connected to the internet right now, so I'm completely off. But once you've done all that, make sure to write it down. Um, writing on paper is cool. Never take a picture of it. There's actually some cool things out there where you can actually get metal plaques where it's almost like you're doing printing on a printing press back in the day where you grab character by character and just slide them into a card. But if you can actually store your seed phrase in metal, I highly recommend it. It's one of those things that it's, paper gets destroyed, metal's not necessarily forever, but it lasts a lot longer. Now here's where this gets super cool, is we're gonna go ahead and set up a pin. So this is where I like actually having a hardware device. So we're gonna go ahead and set up the pin. It says, do you really want to? Again, just keeping with the existentialistic crisis, but the answer is yes. Now let's say I want my pin to be one, two, three, four. If you look at the screen here, it actually, 
blanks out where all the numbers are. And this is where the extra layer of security comes in. Is the only way to know where these numbers are is to have this physical device. So if I want my password to be 1234, for example, instead of doing your traditional 1234, you're actually going 1, 2, 3, 4. And that's gonna change every single time. So let's say somebody does somehow get your wallet. Right now, my private key requires this. So if you try to create my wallet somewhere else and you don't actually have the device or the core software that's there, this is never gonna generate correctly and you'll never actually have access to the funds. But let's go ahead and set that up. And then we got the pin set. And now we have a wallet. And right now the main things you can put in here are Bitcoin, Litecoin. If you're Tom Crown, you're definitely all about that. Uh, Ethereum, Ethereum Classic, XRP, which I believe you can actually only do that with the Trezor Model T. I'm not sure if you can get that software on here. Fortunately, no Cardano. Again, Trezor Model T. But some of your main ones here. And then we complete setup. And now you're good to go. So building one of these from scratch, super easy. In the description below, we have some places where you can grab Raspberry Pi 4s. Again, this is overkill. You really want to do it with the Pi Zero. It's going to be a much smaller form factor as well. But any of these work. And on that Trezor website, if you have any questions, you can actually go through there and figure things out. The nice thing with this, as I said earlier, you don't have to solder on the, the header pins. So that saves time. And what's kind of cool is once this is all set up, as long as you have your seed phrase and everything else, technically, this is your hardware wallet. And it would suck if you lost this. It comes down to the same thing, whether it's cold storage or hot storage, your seed phrase is your ultimate gatekeeper. So if this card were to get destroyed, I could go ahead and reflash this. I could put this in this device and then I could go through and do my recovery phrase and get everything back. But again, the key thing is nobody had access to this code. So as long as I'm safe and I haven't shown anybody my seed phrases, you're completely protected. And it's kind of nice to have this little device that you can do things with. You can repurpose this screen, but do not lose the card and definitely don't lose the seed phrase. Kind of a quick recap, you get uh, the Bellina Etcher. That's how you're actually putting the, um, the OS on the flash drive itself. Download Trezor Suite and then go to the Pi Trezor website and make sure to go ahead and get the right flash version to put on there. Change those th uh, four lines of code. I can count that high, we talked about that earlier. And you're good to go. Um, again, security is kind of a big thing. I think Ben's even dealt with this before where somebody has sent him a ledger and you should get sketched out. Like definitely only buy a ledger and or a treasure directly from them. Doing anything secondary, you have no clue who touched that and not put either of these companies on blast. I have no clue who touches this prior. I have no clue how the software gets on there. I don't know anything but it's one of those things, it's not that much harder to sit in your own DIY space and actually make these yourself. So that's it. Thank you very much for tuning in. I have no clue what we're doing next week. Hopefully one of these days, Jack and I are actually doing a speed build. GPUs were not the limiting factor. I'm not really sure why, it was the cases. But until next time, if you guys have any sweet ideas, cool things you want me to do, me to actually wash my hair for once, I don't know. Put down in the comments, but until next time, thanks for watching.